Hey all here OS Reviews, some of you guys may recall that a while back we checked out a pair of TWS wireless buds called the Card 20, and it claimed to be the world's thinnest wireless buds. Had a very cool design and also came with Qualcomm's Aptex support, so it sounded surprisingly good for something so slim in terms of profile. They went on to win quite a few design awards in the following year. Well, the company is now back with another pair of wireless buds that we're taking a look at today. These are called the X-Boat Pro. Despite the slightly strange naming that they're going for. This is another really unique pair of buds when it comes to the design. This time it has a open shape for the case so the buds can be really easily popped in and popped out and compared to the previous generation card 20 they now have active noise cancellation or ANC although ANC with a semi-open shape is still a little bit strange. We'll have to talk about the performance later on and it also comes with LDAC support. It has 13 millimeter drivers, definitely looks very futuristic and it has IPX4 water resistance and sweat resistance as well. So again, it comes in a few different colors, lasts up to 40 hours, which is also fairly long. And then when removed from the casing, the buds will get you a continuous roughly six hours of music listening. However, if you have active noise cancellation turned on, that's gonna be a little closer to five hours. These are definitely premium flagship grade buds. So they sell for 99 bucks a pop, which isn't exactly cheap, but for the unique design that they're going for, I would say it still is competitive. Inside here, we have, of course, just the buds themselves, simply, USB type C and that's pretty much it because again these have a open shape so they don't have any silicon tips just like the Apple AirPods everything just pops in and it's kind of a one size fit all. Taking a closer look at the design the first thing that strikes you is it definitely feels very premium in the hands because of the aluminum alloy shell as well as the tempered glass that they're using on the back. More specifically, it's this frosted texture that has almost this gradient effect as you're shining across the light, and it just feels extremely polished. It's parts that you would typically find on a flagship smartphone. Now, just like the Car 20, and you can kind of tell that it's from the same company, they've used the bottom placement for the USB Type-C charging port, and perhaps that's a conscious decision just to make the profile a little bit thinner, but in this case, the Expo Pros are still going to be a little chunkier than the Card 20s from before, which are in fact still a bit thinner, but again, these do have a different driver for the buds, and again, the buds themselves can be easily popped in and popped out just by untwisting them on the sides. You don't have to open up any door, and the magnets are pretty strong, so when they are attached, it's not going to fall loose or anything like that. There is a center LED light, as you can see there, which is pretty cool, it tells you the charging status, and it kind of faintly glows while the charging is in progress, and there's individual LEDs LEDs as well on the top. And then the comparison here is more about the shape of the buds because they have that semi-open design, which is again similar to the Apple AirPods. So love them or hate them, these are going to be a little bit looser and slightly more comfortable. They're not tight and they have a kind of an interesting fusion of a soft touch rubber texture along with kind of a chrome shiny material going on on the top. And otherwise, again, very lightweight and compact. Here's a look at the mesh and then we have touch controls on the top, which you can use to do pretty much everything on these, including changing the volume higher or lower, switching between the different A and C effects, playing and pausing the music, all of those things can be done. So by themselves, the buds aren't super assuming in terms of their design don't really jump out too much but overall still looks quite clean and very light and then again the battery case with the buds completely removed we can see a little bit more of branding info and kind of the charging as well as the magnets that's holding everything into place. Now one thing to note is that these folks haven't created a companion app perhaps it's one of the only missing pieces but you don't necessarily need it here because like I said even the volume controls are already baked in changing between the A and C effects by long holding for a few seconds can all be triggered already on these uh, but if you're looking for more advanced functions like EQ controls you have to really use a third-party solution a little bit more on the comfort overall I do think that it is a slight improvement compared to the previous card 20s which you can see here were even smaller and because they wanted to squish down the profile so much these to be honest were a little bit too loose at times and uh, if you were doing a lot of vigorous movement or exercise uh, they may not have been the best fit but uh, these at least are a little bit more conventional in terms of their shape even though they're not quite as thin but overall I think it works out a little better. Moving into sound quality I am 
glad to say that it's not a case of style over substance, and just like the Car 20s, they sound surprisingly great for something that has such a novel design. In fact, the 13mm drivers, which by the way are definitely larger than the average pair of wireless buds, they usually come in around 6 or 7mm, so with a bigger size in there, it definitely packs a little bit more room for low-end frequencies like bass, and overall definitely has really good clarity. So especially if you're using the LDAC format and you are listening with that mode turned on, at the moment that is going to be primarily with Android phones, you can definitely hear a lot of intricacies within the tracks. There is almost no distortion or any background hissing or any noise. Super clean even as you play and pause the music, no popping or anything weird going on like that, and it definitely sounds very rich and immersive, which is kind of hard to fathom for something so small, but I have to say that the sound quality here really is excellent. It is worth noting though that these don't come with a low latency gaming mode, and you can kind of think of that as the antithesis of LDAC, because with higher resolution audio, they're trying to pack in as much detail and transmit it over Bluetooth as possible, versus low latency is trying to eliminate as much detail as it can, but still sound okay to try and make it a faster connection. Now in practice, if I was really using these to watch videos on YouTube or Netflix, I found them to still be great in terms of the audio and the video, people that were speaking on screen still seemed to match with the video that I was watching. It wasn't uh, uncomfortable or anything like that. Bluetooth 5.2 is much improved, but if you are expecting it to have no latency at all when you're playing back really fast frame rate games like PUBG, that's still an area where these might not be the best fit. Now moving into the active noise cancellation component, it's a little more mixed. Uh, you do feel a difference with it turned on, especially with some lower frequency sounds like engines, it just gets slightly more repressed, but like I said, anything that has this type of open shape like the AirPods just doesn't have as quite of a tight connection uh, with your ears compared to something like this which can just naturally isolate more sound because of the silicon tip and so it's always going to be more challenging for something like this which is open to really have effective active noise cancellation so it's a big challenge and it makes a difference, but if you're getting these for A and C, these are not going to be the most effective. Of course, the opposite, which is kind of that transparency effect, is great. Um, even with just naturally wearing them, like the regular AirPods, because they're not super tight, you can still hear a little bit of the world around you. So if you are someone that is kind of commonly walking across a busy street, you can have a bit more of that awareness of your surroundings just naturally uh, with this type of design. Although it does also tend to leak out sound a little bit more. So that's more or less it as far as our quick hands-on review of the X-Boat Pro. These undeniably have one of the coolest designs in terms of casing and one of the most premium constructions I've ever seen. You have to kind of hold it to really understand how hefty and well-made it is. Out of the single chunk of metal and glass, it just looks amazing. And surprisingly, the sound in terms of the pure clarity also lives up. Uh, with LDAC support, everything is very clean. And they are indeed super slick and easy to use. Even the touch controls are easy to master and you're able to do everything on them, which is much appreciated. With that being said, in some areas like active noise cancellation, that's still a little bit on the iffy side. And uh, perhaps in the future, they can also bring out a low latency mode that would make them even more complete. But overall, definitely a very cool pair of buds. And I love to see how this company always tries something a little bit different and brings out designs which are unique and not just conforming to the norm, which I think we should Plot. So you can check out more details if you're interested in the links down below, but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews, that's been their new Expo Pro.